guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be chit-chatting my way through um, the Good and the Beautiful's science units. Um, really, I'm just going <laughs> to talk my way through one of the units, but all of the units are basically laid out the same way. I currently own seven of their science units. I think it's seven. Um, I have arthropods, I have both of their energy units, the chemistry unit, water, meteorology, and space. But I've only worked my way through one of the units with it, which is the arthropod unit. And we have enjoyed it so, so very much. Um, uh, I told you this before, what I love is that it provides a basic structure for me to be able to just go from there and be as creative as possible um it takes out a lot of that work that i was doing beforehand in building unit studies by not having to pull together all of that basic structure that i had to build first before adding my little creative bits to the mix so now i just have their unit studies and then i just get to add all of my little creative things on top you know and make any adjustments or additions as i see fit so what i have done. I've been taking basic one inch white binders and I I punch holes in the curriculum and add it to the binder. I take the front of the packet and put it into this little clear slip here which is really really nice. So all of them are their pods. Let's see if I can try to stack it up you guys. Are their pods and then we have energy. Let's see how strong I am. You're gonna see all my muscles right here okay. <laughs> That's meteorology. Yeah, I may never use it. <laughs> Water. I have space. Yeah. So that is how, and chemistry, but I haven't um, printed out all of the chemistry unit. So that is what I do with it. In the beginning of the packet, it will list the supplies that you need. I would suggest heading to the store and going to grab all of the supplies and putting them into a bin or a work box of some sort so that as you work your way through the lessons you will always have what you need to complete them um, uh, most of the stuff that is listed in the supply on the supply list I had I already had so I really didn't have to make a special trip to the store but that is what I will do when I start um, each additional unit study um, so what I did was I pulled right in the front lesson one. Oh no let me just talk you through it first hold on let me pull this out hold on let me pull this out okay so i just worked my way through the entire unit packet just to get a general you know feel for what we are going to be covering i think that is really wise um it is open and go with the exception of the supplies that you need but i mean it's just really nice to just kind of breeze through it so when you look at the front of your unit study um, they will lay out all of the information for you just like they do in every other bit of curriculum, <laughs> um, which is super nice. Can you see? Can you see? Okay. Which is super nice. Um, they tell you that you are going to be using a science journal. We use a composition book for our science notebook. Um, so we just use that same thing for our journal instead of a three ring binder. Um, the science wall we have one of those as well but then we just we just kind of post anything anywhere it could be in their rooms on their cork boards on our chalkboard on our little design board wherever we want to um, there are lesson mini books inside we normally make copies and then cut them out and then staple them together but those little lesson mini books are really nice um, and then they talk about preparing for the lesson and teaching older children. This unit study is designed for grades K through 6. If you are teaching older children grades 7 through 12, look for the older children symbol, which is a magnifying glass that they have um, at the end of most lessons. That way they will give you suggestions on different things that you can do with older children um, for that lesson. Then they give you a section for read aloud storybooks. Um, and then they separate it by the lesson. So for lesson four, they suggest the Empress and the Silk Worm. And lesson seven, they suggest Small Wonders. Lesson 12, um, they have Spiders, Spinning Spiders by Melvin Berger. So they just list all of the suggested read aloud, suggested read aloud books to go along with the lessons. Then they move on to vocabulary. I do not like to uh, cut these pages up. I printed them out and put them up on our 
word wall or what we used as our word wall. Um, if you haven't seen that video, I just kind of show you how I did that. I'll link it down in the description box or up here in the card somewhere. So um, I just like that so that I can keep this, you know, unbothered page inside of my unit study to use at a different time if I would like to. But they have all of the vocabulary there. Um, oh, so this is for lesson one. I took that one out. I took this one out, but of course there's a table of contents and they will just show you that lesson one is the introduction to arthropods, lesson two, the introduction to insects, lesson three, oral presentations, lesson four, insect stations, lesson five, bees and wasps, bees and wasps for lesson six as well, um, entomologist lesson seven, and this was lesson one. So it basically has the same layout, the same structure as all of the rest of their curriculum. They have a section um, for your objective, any preparation that you need to have done before starting the lesson, um, what you're going to read to the children, an activity here, more reading to the children. I also really like, um, I mentioned this in some of the other videos, I also really like how they have little indicators to let you know um, what is going to be there. And I like that a lot because I feel like in, in quite a bit of curriculum, there's just a lot of words. So in The Good and the Beautiful, they use a lot of pictures that kind of separate and help my attention span at least. Um, and then they have these little indicators like this little notebook in the corner, which lets me know that this is going to be a section that they're going to use their journal for. And then also another little indicator, this little magnifying glass that says to me, these are going to be some suggestions for our older children. Then also inside they have um, graphs. Um, they have a lot of really beautiful pictures that you then cut out to use as cards. Um, they introduce different stations. They just have a lot of really um, fundamentally sound activities that you can do and then repeat in different ways using different information. So I really like it. In lesson three of this unit, they introduce the oral presentations and they just kind of give you a guide for how to set that up with your kids. Um, they, I like that. I like that they give you little questions to explore with your kids, um, the different ways that they would approach their oral presentation. So it says, make a plan with the child on how to create the report answering the following questions. Will you research online or obtain books about the subject or both? Will you create a poster, a slide presentation, or other visual aids? I really like that they have included that. Like I said, there's just so many things inside of their curriculum that remind me of things that we just do naturally which is nice and it lets me know that I'm in the right direction. Um, I also love that they give you options um, when you're when you're um, when you are entering into a new activity because all kids are different. You know, kids are different and what may be fun and exciting for one child may not be for the other child. And then also if you are teaching the different levels, the different grade levels you know, it really opens up some different ideas on how to approach it for each individual child based on their age, which is another reason why you're able to do um, these unit studies together as a family instead of having to separate things, which is always a bonus. Generally what I do with the sections where they have charts like this one, um, is this called a Venn diagram? I'm pretty sure it is. If it's not, I'm going to edit this out. <laughs> anyway, but um, uh, whenever I see graphs like this, these are things I typically put on our boards. So I put it on our chalkboard or I put it on our whiteboard. Things that can be constantly in front of their um, faces um, or things that can constantly be be before them um, to review on their own without having to open up their notebooks because I've found that if they put certain things inside of their notebooks they don't see that information again until they open up their notebooks again so I like taking information like this or charts like this that they have included inside of the um, curriculum and actually putting them on display on one of their boards like I said the chalkboard that's in our school room the chalkboard that's in uh, their bedroom um, the cork boards that are in their bedrooms the white boards that are anywhere in our house um, I just kind of spread these charts all around so that just in different places of the house they are introduced 
you know, or um, they are reminded of the information that we have been learning in our lessons. It's just like another bit of reinforcement all over the house. It just adds to that little sense of exploration. You know I'm extra. And <laughs> I feel like it's totally a thing in our, in our house. So I like that a lot. I do the same thing with this curriculum that I do with the others. I do not necessarily do them in order and I make whatever adjustments I need to make um, to, to, to make up for that. Because sometimes they will mention something that you learned previously in a lesson that I may have skipped. So, <laughs> and they definitely say that they don't recommend you skipping lessons, but like I said before, it works for us. Um, in this case, when we started off the arthropod unit, we I had ordered our butterfly kit from Insect Lore. Um, so when it came in, we had already been well into that process. I think we had had it for a few weeks by the time, for a week or so by the time we had really started to get into the lessons. So I went ahead and did the very first lesson, but then after that I skipped um, on to, I think it was lesson eight on butterflies because it just... It just made sense our butterflies were about to emerge and it just made more sense to just cover the butterfly um, part of the unit study instead of waiting until after we had already had our butterflies emerged and released so we went ahead and did that and I did lesson 8 and lesson 9 I'll show you and the butterfly lesson was lesson 8 so we went ahead and skipped forward to lesson 8 and 9 so that we could cover that information at the same time that our butterflies were emerging and then we just backtracked and went back I can't say it enough how much I love the way they structure their curriculums um, I just find it very very easy to add to and adjust if I need to so inside of this unit they had um, trivia cards that they included for the um, lesson on mosquitoes and I found it super easy to be able to add to it um, I could just add other pictures uh, that we found and different bits of information that we found and just add to the trivia cards that are already there. So as a part of lesson four, they introduce insect stations. So um, they cover mosquitoes, fireflies, termites, and silkworms. So there's different um, things you print out and you create these little stations all around the room, which again, I feel like really promotes that sense of you know, drives in that sense of exploration and discovery. So I like it a lot. <laughs> I feel like this is really easy for you to duplicate with another set of insects that you wanted to study. So we did not cover the mosquitoes, the fireflies, termites, and silkworms just yet. Um, and I did the same thing using the insects that we were encountering the most. So we did a lot of beetle um, type of stuff. Um, and I found it very easy to follow this same mold by finding images that I wanted to use and corresponding like um, uh, labels and descriptions and information on that particular insect. So we're going to backtrack and go back to this and do this one as well. But this one was really easy for me to duplicate using our own set of information that we uncovered because I just don't like, I don't like my kids to feel like if they are interested and one thing at that time, I want to take advantage of their current interest. Um, and so this has given me a way to do that, but still using that same structure um, of the lessons that they've already laid out. So I don't want to force them to, okay, we have got to study mosquitoes today because that is what is on the list to discover. Um, if they have come across all these beetles and are fascinated by these different types of beetles and want to stay there. So I found that um, their science curriculums really lend themselves to me being able to adjust them and, um, and use their basic foundation, the way that they um, build the lesson, to then interject my our own information based on what we are interested in studying at that time, if that makes any sense. <laughs> I hope it doesn't seem like I'm totally trying to change the curriculum sometimes. I'm not. It's just that when I was looking for a curriculum, I really, really needed something that made it easy for me to have structure, but still be free to make it our own and follow our own interest and in things that were naturally coming up in our everydays. And this curriculum has really made it very easy 
for me to do that and still provide that same basic structure just in case like I've said in the past I'm not as creative or we haven't been as interested in something so I don't know I love it and also did you guys know that roly polies were crustaceans okay <laughs> I learned that okay I did not know that and I learned that in this unit study thank you very much so yeah, this one is basically short and sweet. I think their unit studies are great. I was a huge fan of using unit studies in our homeschool in the first place and I built many of ours myself. And this has really cut down on um, a lot of the work that I had to do in building a lot of those unit studies. Now, um, a, a lot of, a fair amount of the unit studies that I have prepared um, in the beginning were not necessarily always science related or there are certain things that were more fun and themed. So we still use those plans from our older unit studies. The things that we had planned um, already, we still use them like a dinosaur unit or um, a color unit. Um, so we still use those, but it's really nice to have these thrown into the mix and take that load of work off of me. I love that they've included videos that they found on YouTube. I really like that they have the lesson extensions for older children. I in particular love that because you guys know how much I am a fan of stretch material. So it's nice to have. I would also suggest a lot of times they'll have worksheets in here. I suggest that you print those off instead of completing the worksheet that's actually inside of the unit study. That way, um, if you want to do it again, revisit it again, or use it for another child, you can do that. And then also um, these, like I probably shouldn't have punched holes in this life cycle of a butterfly. Instead, I probably should have put it in the front jacket and laminated it. I also do that with these as well. Instead of using these and cutting them up. Um, I print these out, cut them up, laminate them, and then I have those to use and this one to reference. So I would suggest that as well. Oh, you didn't want to see that spider, did you? <laughs> did you want to see that spider? Let me turn to a different page and tell you. I would highly suggest when you get to images like these for these activities to copy them, then cut them out and laminate them, and then you can always go back to this one for reference. So yeah, I mean, there's really not much else to say about it. I love the basic structure of it. Um, we have really been enjoying it. I've only used this one so far. I did own the space one, but I had just finished our space unit by the time I got it. But I went through to review it and quite a bit of it was a lot of what we had covered. Um, so we're very excited for that space unit to roll around again. And as a matter of fact, I may just go ahead and let my um, son work through some of the parts of the space unit until we get back to it as a family again. So I really am enjoying the science unit studies. You guys do unit studies in your home. I love them. They're more like a theme for us and how we do them as far as our schedule is concerned is um, we generally do about an hour of unit study work every school day. So it breaks up the time between our core lessons and our elective. We go core lesson, which is on a block, and then we have unit studies, and then we do some type of elective at the end of the day. Um, for our summer schedule that we are in right now, we just do the unit study work on one day of our school week. So we are enjoying it. <laughs> I'm getting tired because these videos have been a lot. And I hope you're liking them. I hope I'm not too rambly. I'm sorry. I'm trying my best. So um, if you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed if you like seeing our videos. If you have any questions, just leave them in the description box below. And I will see you in our next video. Bye. I stumbled through that one, you guys. I stumbled through that one, I'm sorry, but I love the science units and I hope to share more about using them on our Insta on my Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> oh, why am I having a hard time? Okay, I'm getting tired. Anyway. This one was hard to get through. <laughs> We're almost done. We just have two videos left. I think we have geography 
and level three and four of language arts. So, I'll see you soon. Bye.